It means cloudiness of water. Okay? And I told you that if you stand beside fresh water, such as pond, stream, river, during the dry season, you'll be able to see the bottom of that water body. And that shows that light penetrates to that bottom. That's why you are seeing the bottom. And you know, we have different organisms inhabiting different parts of the water. We have some that will live on the surface, some middle part of the water body, while some the down part, the bottom of the water body. That's where they are found. You have plants growing inside water body also. So, during the dry season, there is no problem with fresh water habitat. Even with all water habitat, what I just want you to know is that it is the depth that life can reach that you will find plants. And that is why that depth where life can reach, we have many organisms than other parts that light cannot penetrate because where light can reach we have plants we have animals that we feed on plants there then we also have animals like the uh, secondary consumers that will be feeding on those first animals that is the herbivores and if we continue like that then i told you that during the rainy season you discover that the quantity in such water body will have increased then the water will now be dirty or colored it is due to the erosion you know running water from adjacent soil then people dump refuse in water body so all this will make the water body to be dirty and to be Colored. And when it is colorful, it's not possible for light to penetrate to the bottom of such water. So, as a result of that, organisms that need sunlight, such as green plants, will not be found. Uh, will be found, but they may not get sunlight for their photosynthesis. I also told you last week that most organisms are carried away from their real habitat to another habitat during rainy season as a result of the flood. And I told you that we have the slow moving animals, we have the active animals. The active animals are called active swimmers. Okay? They are they are usually they can swim, those active swimmers, they can swim against the water current. So no matter the current, the water current, they can swim in any direction. But those ones that are attached to pebbles, to stones, or all those ones that are found uh, at, the bottom, at the bottom of the water body that are slow-moving organisms can easily be carried away to another habitat. So that is that. Then, I now told you that when during rainy season, the amount of light that will reach water body is usually greatly reduced because the water is colored. And in order to determine that, we make use of an instrument called circuit disc. I told you that circuit disc is made from an heavy metal, okay? and it is painted white then the other side that will be black okay and then you now attach a rope to it a long rope to it so you stand beside that water body that is colored that is turbid and then you insert the circuit disc so when you do that as you are lowering it down the water that white color on the disc will be the color will be will be fading gradually gradually then it will get to a point that you can't notice that white color again so that part where you are still seeing the white color 
faint you, that is the part, that is the depth that light can penetrate. So other parts will not receive sunlight during that rainy season or during that period when the water is colored. So that is the use of uh, second days to measure turbidity of water. So turbid water reduces light penetration and as a result of that, reduces the population of the plants and the depth at which such plants can live. What I have explained, is it clear to everyone? What yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh -huh. So, if I ask you to explain turbidity now, I believe you can do so now. Answer me now. If I ask you to explain turbidity, is it clear now? SS1. Yes, my clear. Okay. So I want to move on to another factor under uh, in another ecological factor in aquatic habitat. And that is the speed of flow of water. Speed of flow of water. The speed of flow of water affects organisms living in aquatic habitat. You know, we have the active and fast swimming organisms. We can live successfully in fast flowing water. But it's not only the active and fast swimmers that we have. We also have the, uh, the non-active and the slow, the slow swimming organisms. Okay, so those ones are found in ponds. So you should be able to differentiate when you are asked to explain this. The fast swimmers, the active and fast swimmers, are mostly found in big rivers. Okay, because. The water current there is very high and they can swim against the water currents. Why the slow moving organisms will be found in ponds and then in stream. Okay, you know, the water currents in stream is very slow. So those are the two sets of organisms inhabiting different habitats. And that is why if you are looking for organisms such as pyrogyra, you may not find it in river because of the water pouring. Except if you have a particular part that the water is not flowing very well, maybe you may find it there. But the best habitat will be inside a stream or pond. That's where you can find it because Pyrogyra does not attach itself to anything. We just find it by the surface okay, of the water body. So that is the explanation on speed of flow of water. And let me tell you this. Everybody take your Bible and write down this. I want to give you this assignment to the next class. After the test, if the time permits, we discuss it together. Are you set? Hello? Yes, yes ma'am. Ah. Yes, ma'am, we're set. Uh -huh. So, write. Write the precise habitats. Write the precise habitats of the following organisms. Write the precise habitats of the following organisms. One, pyrogyra. One, pyrogyra. Oriolua, you are just joining us. Pyrogyra. Yeah, yes, ma. Two. Orilua, good morning. Good morning, ma. So you met us at assi assignments. 
greatly pick your pen and write, write the precise habitat of the following organisms. Write the precise habitat of the following organisms. One, Spirogyra. One, Spirogyra. Two, Padpole. Padpole. Three, Crab. Crab. Crab four prawn four prawn a prawn or frog prawn prawn I said prawn prawn five tilapia fish five tilapia fish excuse me ma'am yes. must read it at the front or at the back. Uh, do it at the back. Okay, ma'am. Okay. Five tilapia fish. Six toad. 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 Seven lemna plant. Lemna. Lemna is spelled L E M. N A L E M N A Lemna plants Lemna plants Eight water lettuce Water lettuce So that's that. Eight organisms. So I want you to tell me their precise habitat, where they are actually found. You know, all those organisms that are given. Excuse me, my please. What is number one and two? Number one is Pyrogyra. Number one is Pyrogyra. Why number two is Tadpole? Tadpole. Are you okay, everyone? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, all those organisms, where are they found? All right. Yes, we answered that. Aquatic habitat. Uh -huh. Aquatic habitat. Funkai Ogundele, good morning. We all know about this guy, right? So, all those organisms are found in aquatic habitat. So let's continue with our ecological factors. Now, the next one is depth of water. Depth of water. Okay? You know, the depth of water varies from water body to water body. For instance, now, you can compare the depth of a stream with that of the pond. And you can compare that of the pond with river, and that of river with maybe sea or ocean. So it varies, okay? So depth of water affects light penetration. Depth of water affects light, pen uh, light penetration. It also affects the amount of dissolved oxygen. That's point number two. It also affects the amount of food. Then the last one is the pressure water. Okay? Amount of food and the pressure of that water. Now let's look at those points one by one. Where do you think light will penetrate 
to the bottom, to the bottom of that water body. Which water, bo which water body do you think light will reach the bottom of that water body? Pond. Pond. Pond, number one, yes. Another one. River. River. River, yes. Which other one? Streams. 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 So, so you can penetrate to the bottom of those examples you have given. Let me penetrate to the bottom of pond, of streams, of rivers. Okay? Now, let me see, cannot get to the bottom of who is that person playing radio today? Please. That person should either move away or you stop your radio, you disturb it. So, light can penetrate to the bottom of those examples of water bodies we have mentioned. Now, it won't get to the bottom of seas, neither oceans. That's it. Then, when we are talking about dissolved oxygen, dissolved oxygen, dissolved oxygen usually more at the surface of water body because oxygen is slightly soluble in water. So we have oxygen very, very high. The concentration will be very high at the surface of the water body. Okay? But as you are going deep down, it will be getting reduced. Oxygen concentration will be getting reduced. The dissolved oxygen in aquatic habitat will be getting reduced as you are going down deep in that water body. Okay? And another point that you need to know is this. That dissolved oxygen will be very high at that depth where you have plants. Do you can anybody give me the reason for that? SS1. Why do you think oxygen concentration, dissolved oxygen concentration will be high at the depth that you have plants? Eddie Dion. Eddie Dion. Man, I'm not sure. You don't know. Who knows the answer among you? Eh? Nobody. Nobody can give the answer to that. Okay, let me say that you will still provide me the answer. During photosynthesis, which gas is released? Oxygen. Oxygen, good. Oxygen is released during photosynthesis. So if you not have plants living in water and you have photosynthesis taking place and then you have oxygen being released. So can you link up that explanation to the question that I asked you? Eddie Dion. Eddie Dion. Yes, who can listen and tell us the answer? Or not purple. Papa, can you repeat the question? I said uh, oxygen level is very, very high at the surface of the water body. I now said that if you are moving deep down in the water and you have plants there, that the oxygen content will also that the oxygen content will also very high wherever you have plants okay i am now asking who can give me the reason for that but i think because when the plants are going through the process of photosynthesis, they release the oxygen content okay good so you that that just it is because plants are found at that depth and you know there is no real oxygen, uh, photosynthesis will take place without oxygen being released. And that is one of the reasons why you have many organisms at that depth that light can penetrate because you have plants there, 
oxygen content there is also very high. So you have many animals at that depth. You have organisms that will be feeding on the plant directly. Then you have other ones that will be feeding on one another also. So they have food and they also have oxygen. What I've explained is it clear? Answer me. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Good. So in shallow water, light can penetrate to the bottom of the water. Then green plant can grow in and at the bottom of such water. Atmospheric oxygen in the soil at the surface of the water can also diffuse to most part of the water for the respiration of aquatic organisms. Then green plants are available in the water as food for aquatic animals. Okay? But as the depth of water increases, the amount of light, the amount of oxygen, and the number of plants decrease. Are you following? Okay, okay. Good. As, uh, let me repeat it again. I said as the depth of the water increases, the amount of light, oxygen, and number of plants decrease while the pressure will increase. As we are going down in the water body, the pressure will be increasing. Why oxygen level or oxygen concentration, light, and then uh, food for organisms will be getting reduced, okay? So the depth of an aquatic habitat is usually measured with depth gauge. There is an instrument called depth gauge. So that is what is being used to measure the depth of water, okay? Or you can also, if it is river or stream or pond, you know, how many of you have seen that gauge, like meter with long one, that those people walking at the filling station normally use? How many of you have seen it? SS1, talk now. I know some of, you, of your parents are feeling station. Or if they don't have, maybe you are in your parents' vehicle and you saw this attendant lowering down like a meter, a long one, deep down inside the container where you have fuel in the ground. How many of you have seen something like that before? My, uh... Okay. So depth gauge is also like that. So it's like a very long ruler. It's longer than the one you have in the physics lab. Okay? So that's the one they will give to know the depth of that water body. But that one can be used for pond, stream, and then uh, a river. You can't use it for sea because sea is very, very deep. The same thing with the oceans. Okay? Is that clear? What I've explained, is it clear? Answer now. Nobody is talking. SS1. Hello. 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 Uh, your internet connection is on still. We have not the repression to the weather. Hello? Hello? <laughs> Eddie Diong. Hello? 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 Okay. Hello? Can 
Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Ah. I'm not hearing anything. Is this going to be your place now? SS1. Hello. 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 Can you hear me now? SS1. Famoshi. Oduluwa. They can hear you now. Eh. Ore Oduluwa. Ore Oduluwa. Okay, yes, man. I can hear you. Man. Ah, okay. You. So, I will then not be teaching, and then I won't be hearing anything. Okay, let's continue. You have said that you can hear me. So, uh, I said the depth of an aquatic habitat can be measured with depth gauge, and that's where we stopped. So now, I move on to another point, which is nature of substratum. Nature of the substratum, that is the nature of that water body. The bottom, the bottom of a stream, pond, river, or sea, okay, may be muddy, may be sandy, or rocky. Okay, it may be muddy, it may be sandy, it may be rocky. Okay, and all the different subtracts, subtracts that we've mentioned have implications on organisms dwelling in that habitat okay organism organic matter may be present or not organic matter may be present okay at the bottom of water bodies and may also be absent so these different uh bottom favor different organisms for instance, now, burrowing animals. Can you give me examples of organisms that burrow? Aurelua. Aurelua. Adam. 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 Wow. 
SS1. Do you want me to stop the class? I'm asking question now. Nobody is responding. And you want me to continue talking. I will go and report you to the principal. This attitude that you just put on this morning, very, very bad. I know you are hearing me. I can't just understand the reason for unmuting yourself. I can't just understand that reason. So I'm going to stop talking. I cannot just be talking without having responses. And in as well that you have decided, all of you, to unmute yourself. So I'm going to keep quiet. So when you are ready, you let me know. Maybe I can see their chat now.